back here live at the O'Reilly Media Conference, Fluent Conference. Uh, this is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. From the noise. The Cube is where we have conversations with thought leaders, executives, folks in the media business from O'Reilly, uh, and just really get the perspective of what's happening at the events. And uh, my next guest is Charlie Keyes, the CEO, co-founder of Modulus.io. Um, interesting company, startup, uh, kudos in the showcase, startup showcase. Uh, Charlie, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. The, uh, you know, obviously Node.js is uh, really hot here because it allows a lot more cooler things for developers. Uh, we, the Cube, covered the first Node Summit that Charles Beeler put on with uh, Andy Jenks. It was really an awesome event. Um, in San Francisco, it was the first time they ever got together. But since then, it's been pretty explosive. And you guys have built a business on it. So talk about uh, your company and what you guys do and yeah. what you guys are doing with developers and, and some of the cool things you guys have launched two months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we started the company, uh, myself and two other co-founders really started the company because we found this, uh, this lack of a platform that we could use when we were building out applications. And that's really where the idea for what we'd built to this point has really come out of. We, uh, <clears throat> we've got one mission for our company and that's to enable developers to get back to building products. And what that means is we can give them a place to host their applications. So we take care of the servers. We give them a place for their data. So we will host their MongoDB database. And in the end, we give them all of the performance metrics they really need to have to know exactly what's going on with their application. So they can dive in. And if they do see a problem, they really know exactly where, that, where to go and look for that fix. Um, you know, we've seen We've seen thousands of developers pick up and jump onto the platform in uh, the short time that we've been around. And they've really helped guide a lot of the features and new releases that we've done on the platform. Um, one, of the ne one of the next things that we're getting ready to come out with is the ability to do a, a Redis database in the same infrastructure. So under the same roof, you can have your Node.js application, you can have your MongoDB database, and then you can have your Redis, which you're going to use for caching data for these uh, small QuickTime pub sub type stuff. And that's because our developers have asked for it time and time again. And we really want to make sure that we're giving them the product so that they want. So how does Redis want. fit into that again? Can you back yeah. up? Just yeah, absolutely. That's really a popular you know, implementation now. Yeah, going on. So um, yeah for, in, for instance, uh, we use that stack in our uh, infrastructure uh, for our application, for our platform. We use MongoDB to store Basically the same information you store in a relational database, uh, our user information, the projects that they have. But we also use Redis uh, and we use it for a lot of caching. So um, our front end of our website will cache the pages, the articles, our documentation. That's all using cached in Redis so we can pull it out quickly, return it back to our customers very fast. Um, and we see a lot of people using Redis for that same kind of work, but also for uh, the ability to do pub sub, so publish, subscribe, get real time updates on data changes, and Redis has really stepped up in that kind of arena. Um, we've seen that, you know, we've seen a lot of different people using it for a lot of different reasons, but usually it comes down to replacing that kind of uh, caching layer and being able to do a, uh, interesting things with it. So that. low latency kind of request handling. Yeah, of yeah, because it's a, it keeps the entire data set in memory. So it's super fast, and you don't have to worry about, you've got to, it's, it's simple. So you do simple things with it. Yeah, so, so you guys are essentially platform as a service for absolutely. Um, Node. Yep, absolutely. Uh, how is that going? Uh, very good so far. We've, uh, we've seen a really good pickup in the last couple months. Um, we've uh, we launched our paid platform uh, on March 1st, and since then we've added hundreds and hundreds of developers and hundreds of projects on it and seen a lot of people really picking it up. The great thing about Node is, in the last year, it's basically doubled in popularity. Um, last year, NPM installs, which is the package management, they were running around 20 million per month. Now we're looking at 40 million plus every single month of packages being installed and being used in Node.js applications. So the, it's been drastically increased over the last year. Why is Node so popular with developers right now? What's your opinion on that? There's a few reasons. One is um, JavaScript. And you know we're sitting here at Fluent Conference, so that makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, and the ability to use a single language to build your front end and also build a 
powerful, scalable backend is something that developers have always been trying to do. Um, Node.js is really the first solution that has brought it to a level where people can sit down there and, and do it well. Uh, the other thing is Node.js uh, uses the uh, vented I.O. paradigm of, of running actual code. And what that gives them, what gives uh, Node.js the ability to do is scale well. So it can scale up the number of concurrent requests, the, the performance that it uh, is running at, it can go up very fast. And so you can build these very scalable applications on a simple JavaScript uh, server-side language. Why is the session here Node without code, which kind of kind of a cool saying, but uh, from Adobe? But some uh, other tweets out here that's interesting is the Angular JS. Yeah, yeah. What is that about? Because that seems to be popular with the developers in this session. Because you know, Node attracts certain kind of developers, guys doing I/O stuff, streaming. Yes, things of yes. that nature. What does the Angular JS mean? Well, the Angular stuff is mostly front end, and it has the same. It kind of lives in the same kind of paradigms that uh, you're going to see Node developers uh, working with and. The big thing about Node is you build modular applications. You know, you you build small pieces that you can reuse a lot of different pace, cl places. And people on the, the front end and client side uh, world are starting to pick up the same kind of uh, uh, mentality when building applications, which is let's build these into smaller pieces that we can reuse and build more complex applications. So, in your opinion, you think Node's hot? I mean, it's, it's here to stay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially if you look at, let's look at some of the companies that have really started to pick it up. Um, you saw in the keynote this morning at Fluent, uh, Bill talked about how PayPal is literally trying to move their platform to a Node.js world. And they're using it right now for uh, small things and they want to move that into their production world. Companies like LinkedIn, LinkedIn has taken a very big um, step into working with Node.js on a lot of their stuff. It now powers their entire mobile, you know, application, the back end. Uh, Walmart Labs and Walmart are trying, are building a lot of new things with Node.js. Microsoft's taken a, a vested interest in it. You know, these are companies that can make things last for a long time because what you need for things to last is you need these enterprise customers to really grab hold of a technology and run with it. And that's what we're seeing with Node.js. That's that's why it's going to stay around. It's not because um, you know there's a lot of little banded developers, but it's these big companies that have, have a vested interest. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. We're living in a modern era where there's a lot of transformation in the enterprise and these yeah. spaces where you know, the technology literally is old school. I mean, old school is now five, ten years old. So, yeah. so that's all that's technically old school. Maybe it's called high school. I don't know what they want to call it, but it's old school. Yeah, it's not new school. Um, but the new school was looking at different things. So a lot of the new school cutting edge mainstay applications and tools and platforms mm -hmm. were built by the people they built it for themselves. Yeah. Yahoo with Hadoop. Yeah. Um, you know, had, uh, Facebook, Twitter. You're seeing all these guys, LinkedIn. Yep. It, there's no commercial off the shelf software. So like, they have to actually build it, but what's interesting about these web scale companies, now called hyperscale, is they have a lot of I.O. issues. Mm -hmm. They and absolutely so that do. That is the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Mobile devices, you have cloud computing, you have now Internet of Things, you have the, the need to address and manage and communicate in real time, the edge devices. Right, absolutely. Intel calls it the intelligent edge. Mm -hmm. So you agree that's 100% the future. Uh, absolutely, I mean, that it's the way, it, it's because we're continuing to distribute things across the world in, in the internet, and that puts us into an IO world, and because where most things are talking to other devices, other APIs, other, you know, so that's where this starts to happen, is really. Yeah, so LinkedIn and these guys are great bellwethers, as I call them, you know, because they really lock in, and they're investing, they're betting the future. I mean, LinkedIn just went public, they're still a young company. Absolutely. And they're doing extremely well, their product is iterating. I mean, the product progress that LinkedIn has made on their product since they went public was significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was not really high on LinkedIn as a Rolodex type company, but they've transformed into a truly social network, so that's obvious. And, and well documented, but I want to get back to where this leads us. So, okay, with those big whales and those those uh, those innovators, the rest of the market is now catching up. They see it. So the there's always that crossing the chasm kind of the, the pioneers at the table. They they prove it out. The fog is lifted. It's a no brainer. We mm -hmm. have to go there. Yep, that's kind of the mindset. So what are developers uh, looking for? So that that puts a lot of pressure back on the development community to say, okay, yes, 
I want tools, I need a platform, I need Absolutely. tooling. So could you just share your experience and what you've learned and uh, from your company and just being in yeah. the industry around those developers saying, okay, I'm going to go all in on Node and, and, and low latency or Node or whatever. What is the, what is the mindset? What are the challenges, opportunities? There's for there's a few things and, and a lot of it comes down to the resources to learn a new technology and this is documentation. This is people writing about it. This is people building out, uh, you know, blogs that talk to people and tell people how to use the technology because let's be honest, a lot of developers live in Google, you know, that's how they find a solution to how to do something. And if they're learning a new technology, a lot of that's the same thing. Now you have ones that use books and then we have education platforms where education is, you know, really rethink being re uh, think about uh, a lot right now too and we have a lot of new programs out there that teach developers new technologies and we need more of we need more documentation out there and we, we need better we need better uh, people to go out and talk about it a lot and that that's really what get more developers involved that help them get to the next level and then what we have to do is we have to talk about what we've done so we're seeing it a lot more now but PayPal LinkedIn these companies are need to talk about how they've used the tools, what they've seen good and what they've seen bad. And that allows us to learn because we talk about agile a lot here and learning is a big part of that process. We have to build, we have to measure, and we gotta learn. And if we if we learn that stuff, we can feed it back into the system and more developers will kind of be headed in the right direction. That's where you know this concept of best pra practices come along. What does what do a develop what 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 can a developer do to get started? Obviously, you know, on day one we were setting up. Uh, it was Tuesday. You guys were writing code in the hallway. Yeah, so, you know, this, is, this is about coding, right? So you know, got to yeah. get a hands-on approach. But you know, walk through a developer um, mindset. You're a developer. You're like, hey, you know what? I want to either kick the tires with Node. I want to just start ingratiating myself into the community. I want actually to start. I want to put a project or production app on the table. Yep. Walk through what they would need to do. So, I mean, the first thing is let's, uh, you know, open up your code editor. If you already know JavaScript, that's a great beginning because, I, I mean, it's really very much of the same stuff. Uh, you have some different paradigms you, you have to learn um, with the asynchronous nature of Node.js. But open up a text editor and deciding to build something with it is a great start. But beyond that, what you should do is uh, find find the developers in the communities around you. One is the uh, meetups in town. So if you're in San Francisco here, there's some great, great Node.js and JavaScript meetups that you can go to and really get connected with the community. That's a great, great outlet. Um, get online, join the online communities, get involved with the Google group mailing list. I mean, these things will really start to embed you into the community. and get out there and start, decide that you're going to build something. What, no, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you decide that you're going to build a project and you dive in and actually start writing code, that's the best way that you're going to actually get a handle on, on how this works and where you can kind of get to that level, you know, uh, the 10,000 hours type of thing. You, you've got to, got to put in the hours to learn the technology. We're here with Charlie Key, the CEO and co-founder of Modules.io. You're an entrepreneur. You're getting a lot of buzz here on the Startup Showcase. Uh, great conversation. You certainly know what you're talking about. We love Node. Uh, we think it's the future. We think it's going to connect in and create more opportunities. Um, so I want to ask you, why do you think you guys are getting so uh, much buzz here? And talk a little bit about some of the things you guys are doing with developers on your platform. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, one of the things we try to do differently is um, uh, several things. I mean, the the metrics part is important because anybody who's running uh, a production level application, they need to know what's going on. And we we looked at that from the beginning. We said uh, we said, what are the things that you need to be able to do? One, you got to be able to host, host the application. That's obvious, though. I mean, the next is we let's put some data somewhere. But really, when it comes down to it, if we're running an application, we don't know what's going on with it then you're still back at square one. You've got to try to figure out what that problem is happening, where it's happening. And we've seen very, very big uh, pickup from people who are want to know what's going on. So they love the statistics, they love the analytics, they love to be able to look at that data and find out what's going wrong with, going wrong with their application, whether it's good or bad. And that gives them information into, you know, do I need to scale this application up? Do I need more performance? All of these things, that allows developers to really get a handle on, on what's going on. The, the second thing we've done is 
we love being part of the community. We think it's important to get out and talk to people, meet developers, because that's the way you learn. You talk to your customers. And developers are, are one of our customers, and they are important, and they help drive. And we think it's really important to get out, you know, talk to them, uh, find out what they're trying to do, find out how they use Node.js, how they use the technologies that we're, you know, we're respons responsible of providing to them. And, you know, lastly, we think it's important um, to give fanatical support and when people do have a problem, people have a question, no matter if it's, you know, uh, just a common question on Node.js or it's a problem with their application, we think it's important to make sure that they get a response and they get the support they need as fast as humanly possible. How many, can you talk about stats on how many developers are using you guys and just some... Uh... Yeah, I mean, um, we've, got a, we've got just around 2,000 developers on the platform right now. And even on two months? In two months, yeah. Okay, two months, cool. Um, we've got around 1,000 different projects and then at any one point in time there's a, uh, about 500 running. So 500 production applications are running on the platform right now being hosted. Uh, and then uh, hundreds of databases are in our, in our system and that's rapidly increasing day over day. It's awesome stuff. Congratulations. You're on Amazon, you mentioned, so that's yes. cool. You yes. can scale up with those guys. Yep. And, uh, well, they don't whack you on some hidden charges. But you know, keep, we'll keep an eye on Amazon. We, we watch Amazon pretty closely. We're big fans of Amazon. Um, so I want to ask you about something that's uh, you know, been kicked around here. We talk about standards and JavaScript, obviously, for all its legacy and mm -hmm. importance is not going to go away. Obviously, it's it's a, it's a it's a tool it's a choice of, for all developers, but there's some baggage with JavaScript. Absolutely. So, so the talk here is standards, tooling, general purpose, you know, full stack, real software engineering. But one thing that's not being talked about here is web sockets. Web sockets. Could you talk a little bit about why you think it's not being talked about? I mean, I talk to developers all the time, and one of the things that I hear is, "Hey, Node and web sockets are like, I mean, they just salivate. Why? Yeah. Why absolutely. is that? So, I mean, the great thing about Node and WebSockets in particular is, um, you know, WebSockets give you this ability for real-time communication from your browser and your server, and it's something that's built into browsers nowadays. It's a new type of communication protocol, and now that's just available at your fingertips. And Node has it built in as a first-class citizen, and this this makes it easy to build real-time communicative applications very, very simply. And you're going to see this. In this, in well, this it helps world. that Firefox is going to treat it as an OS, yeah. and Chrome is an OS. Yes. So WebSockets becomes not just a compatibility you know, component for some old protocol, TCP IP like thing. Right. It's really different now. It's really part of a it, core. It's really, it's really part of uh, the real time. an ecosystem, yeah. And, and for real time, it's table stakes. Yeah, absolutely, and, and we're in a real time world. I mean, you look at the most popular things that everyone is working with today, you pick up your phone and you look at Twitter. I mean, th this is, it's a real-time application. Uh, chat, you know, um, all of these things live in a real-time world. Uh, games today, you know. Uh, most people want to play a game with another person and they want to play that in real time. This is a technology that can help push that stuff forward and make it easy for everyone to jump in and, and use it. Certainly for social media and social yep. applications and on cloud, any time of transactional edge type uh, app, node and sockets work great. Yeah, and absolutely, and, and especially, uh, you know, we start to look at more technical details on, you know, mobile devices and uh, latency and how these things get put together and how, how, how much time do we have to spend creating more connections if we've got a persistent connection between a device and a server. Well, you guys are obviously on the cutting edge. We love what you're doing. Obviously, platform as a service is obviously not a no, new concept, but what you guys are doing, bringing this kind of service level support for developers really is great. It's one of the things we've been hearing is need. The other thing we've been hearing, I want to get your comments as the final question is, um, you know, jQuery has been bashed about here and there, and obviously JavaScript has some baggage, um, but this is evolutionary, right? Yeah. So you know, those guys, you know, it's, it's grown, and there's a lot of communities, certainly religious wars discussed around approaches and implementations, code bugs, et cetera. Yeah. But the, but the future is about a bigger picture, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you could have your magic wand for standards to a, a develop, if you could say, hey, you know, I'd like to see the preferred future look like this, what does the JavaScript community need for that standard? Because you're seeing general tooling happening. You guys, what you guys are doing is platform level. You're seeing these general purpose environments. Yeah. The standards thing is still an open yeah. question. Why I brought up web sockets. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's that's a hard question. I mean, you. you that's look why at, we asked it. I know. <laughs> you look at things like. It's uh, a big deal, though. It's a big deal. Um, I saw a very good analogy. 
JavaScript has now become the assembly language for browsers, um, and hopefully we can use that as a, as a technology and that other people are compiling to right now. I mean, you look at CoffeeScript. I mean, CoffeeScript's come up in a big way. And it's enabled people that weren't building JavaScript applications to build JavaScript applications. And in the end, what we want is we want people to build JavaScript applications. And the way that happens, to me, is um, not as important as actually getting the applications built. Because I, I hate to play around with, you know, what's my opinion on what someone should be doing. I, yeah. you know, I feel like as long as we're building a great You're enabling developers. We enable developers. and. It, our responsibility is to support them and what the decisions they make along the way, and we can help. We can help guide them, and we can help guide them by um, giving best practices. But it's hard to say that you know I, I'm going to be a draconian and make you do it this way or that way. Well, I'm going to steal your line. JavaScript is the uh, assembler for the browser because. One, it's a great quote. Um, two, it conjures up images of uh, core dumps and stack, you know, <laughs> hexadecimal reviews in the old days when I was a kid. But uh, in all seriousness, to kind of confirm some of the things that we've always talked about on Silicon Angle is that, and this is why I brought up the jQuery JavaScript baggage kind of question in, in a, you know, in a clever way. But because it's the, the problems that we have with JavaScript and jQuery are small compared to what's happening, and and, right. the, and this systems approach the world is becoming more of an operating system, right? So you bring assembler in, you say, okay, that's just my assembler for my I.O. Right. And so, so you, you know, as developers look at this, one of the things we're trying to tease out is, if it's a systems architecture, you got to think of it like a systems, not just as a UI guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right, absolutely. So, so, you know, you're blending two worlds together. Right, and, and that's, that, that's, a, that's problematic for some people to get a handle on, but I think in the end it makes everyone uh, better developers and better technologists even. Um, it yeah. gets us on the same page of understanding how things work and how technology works as a whole. Charlie Key, co-founder, CEO of Modulus.io. Check him out, hot startup here at uh, the Fluent Conference. This is theCUBE where you know, we, we unpack it, we go deep and we try to talk about some of the core issues. You nailed it. Uh, great future head for JavaScript and Node and IO. It's just really amazing time. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We're here live at the Strata, uh, not Strata Conference, the Fluent Conference. Uh, we'll do the Strata Conference coming up soon. <laughs> Velocity first, a bunch of other ones. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.